Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com, and no, you did not win a prize, despite what somebody in the comments, appearing to be me, might be telling you. So today we'll be checking out a new offering from Damasco. It's kind of an old offering that's new again. A bunch of years back, Damasco pretty much has tried to, they were trying to separate themselves from ETA as much as possible and starting to create their own in-house movements. Uh, so that, the, the first part of that, you know, whole process was the DS30, which was an ETA 2024 model, morphed into the DK30, which used their A26 movement. That was a few years ago. And then they went ahead and discontinued all the DA3 and DA4 models. And everyone obviously knew, well, they're just going to reimagine them or reinvent them with their own movement. And that's what we are covering today. Today we'll look at the DK36, which is basically the DA36, but just with Damasco's uh, in-house uh, in -house movement. And I say in-house like this because they're not really producing every part from scratch. There's not a bunch of new technology. Um, I'll try to put a link to my DS video that I did a while ago. Uh, I talked about the movement and the design changes. Uh, it, it still very much appears to be an ETA movement, um, but it's not, it's not pur purchased from them at all. Um, but it's got upgraded winding, upgraded gearing, uh, ceramic bearings, and, and all great stuff. But so definitely qualifies for not being an off-the-shelf movement. So we're looking at the DK36 in steel, in black, and on the bracelet. Of course, there is a hefty price increase, and we will get into that. For my own wrist check, I am sporting, I'm sporting the Range Master, simply because my buddy... TGV and I have been talking about Range Master 2, so it was kind of on my brain, so I'm wearing it. And then on the other wrist, to kind of fit in with the Damasco fashion, I am sporting my DS30 Ocean. Beautiful blue dial, nice Hirsch Robbie black and blue strap. Uh, really a nice, nice watch. Uh, it's got a lot of years on it and still looks brand new, thanks to their case hardening, sapphire crystal, etc. Anyway, that's all I have for you in the opening. Let's check out the Damascos. Okay, so here we go. We are going to be discussing the Damasco DK36. I have three of them in the store, but yes, I'm only showing you two today. I have the DK36 on leather. It's very much similar to this. I'm not showing it to you. I have a DK36 on bracelet, which is right here, and a DK36 black case on the strap, which obviously is right here. Um, the DK36 is basically the same watch as the DA36, which Damasco had out years ago and then discontinued. Um, photography is pretty much the same. They've just changed the insides to accept their new in-house movement. Um, they're all expensive. We're not here to talk about you know how inexpensive they are because they are clearly, clearly expensive and much more expensive than their ETA-based counterparts were. On leather strap, this guy is $1,750. On bracelet, $2,380. Yes, the Damasco bracelet is over $600. Adds over $600 to the price. It is an amazing piece of engineering. Uh, and then the PVD version, the black, it was a damask coating that I'll show you later. This version is $1,840 on the strap. Damasco has never made a PVD or black bracelet for their watches simply because they cannot get them up to the scratch resistance that Damasco demands. So we're running on an A26-3 movement. The DK30 runs on an A26-1. That's a straight three-hander. The DK32, which is the three-hander plus a date, runs on an A26-2, and this is an A26-3. We're basically adding a day and a date feature, much like an ETA 2836, I guess. Uh, so it's their in-house movement, hand wind, tax, all that good stuff. The case itself is 40 millimeters, 12.2 thick to a flat sapphire, and 48.6 on that lug tip to lug tip. Damasco does use AR coating both inside and out on their crystals. Some people get totally bent out of shape. There's really no reason to. If for some reason you decide that you, you if you scratch the AR on the outside, which by the way, it's very tough, um, and you want to take it off, a poly watch and a cloth will polish away the outer AR. Um, it, I said stainless steel. It's more than that. It is nitrogen hardened stainless steel. It's very difficult to achieve. The case hardness gets way, way, way up there. Um, it's almost, it's nearly impossible to scratch the case with normal means. 
Obviously, ditto like the sapphire crystal. Uh, let's see, is the crystal I mentioned. The bracelet is Damasco's 20 millimeter in-house bracelet. This is the thing that adds so much to the price of the watch. The bracelet is basically 30% of the price of the watch. Uh, it's crazy, but it is amazing. It's sized with these Torx screws. It comes with um, a little bit longer adjustment links for a micro fit. It is a, not a push button, it's a friction clasp. Let's see if I can get it open, there we go. And it's a friction clasp friction clasp held in place with ball bearings. The ball bearings are right here. I think you can see them. And they go into these holes in the clasp for a nice, secure, oops, see catch the glove, snug fit. Weighs uh, 173 grams on the bracelet. Uh, water resistant to 100 meters, screw down crown. So you unscrew it. We can pull it out two clicks and we can set the time. Uh, wind it, one click out, whoops, that's two. One click out, one direction will do the date, the other direction will do the day. The day is German and English. The dial, typical, very easy to read Damasco, the sector dial with the horizontal and vertical lines, large Arabic numbers, beautiful, beautiful seconds hand in that neon kind of yellow green pop of color. Uh, and then the hands themselves, lovely sword hands. I, don't, I think people kind of underestimate how difficult it is to make hands like this and loom them and not get the loom paint to be gloppy, if you will. Traditional hands, um, like I'm wearing on the Range Master, are outlines of metal, and then inside they fill it with loom, and through surface tension, it holds itself on there. Uh, so it, it naturally, what is that, lint? I think it is. So it naturally um, sticks itself in and evens itself out, whereas here has nothing, it, it's just on a, a hand, a flat piece. Um, so it's very difficult to get it not to pill up and pillow and stuff like this. Uh, so this is your DK36 on bracelet. Uh, let's um, check out the case back. You've got the serial number. Made in Germany, of course, and it's got all, oh, I didn't realize it was out of focus, sorry about that. It's got all sorts of writing on the case back about the ball bearings and the hardness, and it is, I'm sorry for that, folks. I'm going to hold it still and talk. It's got all sorts of writing about the ball bearings and the hardness and the anti-magnetic properties, blah, 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 all the good stuff that the watch has all the great technologies. This is your DK36 bracelet. As I said, it also comes on a leather strap. If you want to save a couple bucks, maybe upgrade to the bracelet at a later date. Beautiful, beautiful, simple watch. And then, so that one, this one's 2380. So then for 18, 1840 bucks, we have this, whoops, the black version. So it's the same watch. Everything's the same, except the case and crown are done in black, or what they call their damaged coating. It's a very, very tough coating, very hard to scratch. Uh, so just like the matte steel cases are difficult to scratch, this is very difficult to scratch, uh, as well as the sapphire crystal. Lovely strap that they use here with this double stitching. The yellow or greenish picks up the seconds hand. Outer stitching in white. Of course, a black buckle, and then you get this little, little tab under the buckle, a little skin saver, kind of cool. I wish more straps had that to keep it off your skin. Um, but this is the same watch. Unscrew the crown, two clicks out, time, one click out, day and date, or date and day, depending on which way you want to look at it. Um, I dig what Damasco does here with the offset day and date. Obviously, it requires a custom printed day and date wheel. Um, but just below that horizontal line that bisects the dial, it's very visually interesting, and it's balanced by the Damasco logo just over the line. Great little details, um, but they are not, not lost at all. I get a shot of the case back. Again, serial number. Let's try to fold it this way. And let's see. I think you can kind of read it like that. It talks about the stainless steel, the ceramic ball bearing. Again, it's made in Germany. Uh, magnetic resistance, water resistance, etc. cetera. Whole bunch of good stuff. So why don't we, um, I'm gonna put the steel one on because it really is a beautiful, beautiful watch. So here it is on my six and three quarter inch wrist. It fits, well, it fits absolutely perfectly, obviously, as you can see. Um, here we are on the bracelet. The bracelet does go long, which is good because um, we have extra links if they're required, but you know, 
Obviously, the bracelet is expensive. You don't want to have to get extra links if you don't need them. Um, but I would say easily up to a seven and three quarter, eight inch wrist or so. But 40 millimeters, it's absolute perfection and it looks gorgeous. Uh, let's see how the loom works out. There you go, it looks awesome. Damac Damaco. Damasco uses a C1 Super Luminova. So it's fairly white in daylight and then nice and green when the lights go out. The uh, aviator triangle, if you will, at 12 o'clock and then the dots around. So you have a nice orientation point. Uh, Looks awesome. And I think that's going to uh, wrap it up for us today in Damasco. This has been Mark from LongMailWatch.com showing you the, uh, I guess, hopefully what is the first in an evolution of more watches to come out of Damasco using their in-house movement, the DK36. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. Questions, comments, concerns, anything else, you can put it down below. And I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.